In one of my recent videos, I talked about a winning strategy to draw more viewers to your content videos or social media. If you wanna watch that, you can head over to the how to get more views on YouTube video for the details on how that strategy works and why it works. In this video, I'm gonna walk through the easiest and free way to get started with this strategy, making videos that are hyper timely on whatever topic it is that you want to make videos on. So the first thing is before you do anything else is that you want to think about what type of content your audience wants to watch. Are you a filmmaker? Then your audience is looking for movies, reviews, and those types of things. They're not really looking for behind the scenes videos or especially how-to videos. If you're a musician, the same deal applies. Drop the how-to videos, look at reacting to some of the most popular music that interests you, especially if you're, you consider yourself similar to a certain artist. React to the stuff that that artist does and you'll gather the fans from that artist and hopefully they'll convert to your fans. Once you know what type of content you're gonna be reacting to, you wanna make sure to set aside a few hours to film, edit, and upload the video because it's going to be important to get that done as soon as you start filming. Once you have all of that in place, go to wherever you can get the most recent videos about the subject that you are trying to react to. In this video, we're going to be using movies as an example. I like to use IMDb because it's a trendsetter for a lot of the other online media sites around movies. I go to the trailers tab and click the most recent option. It's incredibly important to be choosing something that's been released in the last 24 hours. If it was released an hour ago, that's even better. The next step is simple. You go to set up your camera, which you can use your phone like I'm using right now, uh, or even a cheap webcam. But the key here is to make sure you're framing your face to the left or the right so that whenever you go to edit in the picture, there's space to put this picture here. You'll see in some of the other videos that I've done, I haven't done that very well. I end up having to move this image like down to the right and the other one up here because I've filmed it like this. Really, you wanna be filming like this so that there's plenty of space to put a video there or vice versa, whatever it is. Once you got the framing down, you're gonna to wanna to film your video. That's as simple as that. You wanna be close to your computer or something that you can watch the trailer or the music video or whatever it is on, do a little, uh, intro explaining what you're doing. So like 10, 15 seconds. Hey, the new Eminem music video just came out. I'm gonna react to it. It sounds awesome. Press play on the video and make sure you have the volume turned up on the video, not the whole way. Just turn it quiet enough that your camera or your phone can hear what you are recording because that'll help you match it up later, but not so loud that you can't hear what you're saying because in this audio, that's really what's important is what you're saying. So then play the video through in real time and kind of react to everything that's going on. Um, and then after it plays through, keep your camera running and talk about your afterthoughts. Uh, of the video. And you can talk about this stuff at length because YouTube videos don't have to be short anymore. Uh, so don't be afraid to talk for a while as long as it's interesting and you can keep your energy up. Now you're gonna wanna get that footage onto your computer and you'll wanna head over to YouTube to see if you can find that trailer or video that you were reacting to. I use KeepVid to download videos. You can just copy and paste the URL in the KeepVid page um, and be very careful not to click the ads on the site. It can get a little confusing because the ads look like they are download buttons. They'll say download and stuff. So pay close attention and make sure you're only clicking the stuff that's actually part of the KeepVid site and not ads. So with the free version of KeepVid, you'll only be able to download lower resolution videos. Uh, that's okay though, because we're going to be framing them small in our frame. So it's not a big deal if they're 720 or even 480. So you might be wondering if it's legal to do this. And the question, the answer is, um, kind of, <laughs> uh, because basically you're creating commentary on the video and this technically falls under fair use. So as long as you're actually talking over the video, instead of just letting it play through and then reacting later, uh, you're within your rights. Technically it's still not supposed to be legal to download it off keep it or whatever, but you'll be okay. Now it's time to go and edit. I usually use Premiere Pro, which costs about $54 a month, but I'm gonna show you a free way to do it. If you're really afraid of video software, you can use something like VSDC free video software, but I'm gonna show you how to use DaVinci Resolve to edit the video. DaVinci is free, but extremely powerful, um, and it can be used on Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm gonna be using it on a Mac because I have a Mac. Head over to DaVinci Resolve's website. I'll put the link down in the description and download the free version. It'll ask you to fill out this little survey. That's fine, fill it out and start the download. So then once it downloads, you're gonna go through the install process and then you're gonna open up a project. There'll be a few setup prompts um, and you can use these to help you get used to the program. I'm gonna skip right by them so that we can just get into the editing in this video. When starting a new project, it's gonna ask you to choose from some options and you're gonna wanna choose the HD video 1080p and you're gonna set up your project folder. I really recommend setting up a new project folder rather than just placing it in the movies folder because things start to get lost when they just go into that movie folder. I put a desktop folder 
and then I can move that folder somewhere else later. And it'll give you the option to set, select your keyboard layout. And I'm gonna choose Adobe Premiere Pro since I'm used to using Adobe. Uh, you can use whatever you want there. Um, if you're trying to follow along, I would suggest sticking with Premiere options there just so you have the same options as I do. So then once your project is open, you're gonna to go to File, Import Media, uh, and to, then you're gonna bring in both of your videos, the one that you reacted to, and then the video of you actually reacting to it. It helps if you put these in the same folder somewhere so they're easy to find, um, but you don't have to do that technically. Okay, so first you're gonna click on the video of you reacting and you're gonna drag it down into your timeline. Scroll through the video and find a point where the audio of the trailer starts. You can use the right and left arrow keys to scrub. That's what it's called when you go frame by frame. You can scrub through a frame at a time and the technique is to find a spot in the audio where there's clearly a different sound from the frames around it. So a loud bang or a really noticeable syllable like a t or a b. You can get the right when the b starts or whatever it is. Click through until you find that exact spot and then you go up and double click on your trailer clip. Scroll through until you find that exact same frame and then click the I key, or you can press the mark in button down to the right of the screen there. And then you're gonna just click on the video and drag it down into your timeline above where the video that you already have in your timeline is. And you might wanna tweak it a little bit to get it lined up with the audio just right, listen to it. And if it sounds like there's a crazy delay, that means it's not lined up. And then we're gonna take the left side of it and we're just gonna drag it so it goes back to the actual start point. The next part is a little bit tricky, but you'll find it, it'll get easier once you start to use the program a little bit. So you're gonna go to the top video, you're gonna click on it, the one that's the trailer or the music video that you're reacting to, and then you're gonna click on the inspector tab that should be in the top right of the software. If for some reason it's somewhere else, it might just be that your workspace has gotten a little messed up and you can always go and reset things to the default. Then you're gonna scroll down to the transform category. Here we're gonna click and drag the zoom until the video is about a fourth of the size of the other video or whatever looks good. Um, and then we're gonna change the position values so that it fits in the empty spot uh, that should be in the video that you filmed. Once you're happy with the video, then go down to the deliver tab at the bottom of the program. From there, you're gonna export however you'd like. In this video, we're just gonna use the YouTube default settings, but change it from 720 to 1080. Click the browse button to make sure that you're saving it somewhere you can actually find it, and then hit add to render queue. A new file should pop up in the render queue on the right side of the program. And then from there, you're gonna click and make sure that file is highlighted and click start render. It might take a while on your computer, depending on how fast your computer is, but then once it's done, you're done with DaVinci Resolve, so you can close out of DaVinci Resolve, upload the video to YouTube, make sure the titles are something that'll actually mean it will be found. Try to think of your titles as, if I'm just a random person, I know nothing about you, and I'm just looking for some videos on this topic, what am I gonna type in? That's how you should focus your titles. And it's important not to be deceptive with your titling or your video thumbnail. This might get you more views at first, but it's going to get you dislikes, and the long-term effects are gonna way outweigh any benefit that you're gonna get. I did this early on when it used to work and it does not work anymore, just trust me. You can even use the same thumbnail as the original video that you're reacting to, but at least add a reaction title on the image so that people know that they're not clicking on the original trailer. And that's it. Share that video on your social media channels and do it again. Respond to every comment you get because that helps you hi get higher in your ranking. Um, and it's valuable to stick around for the notifications for the first day or so uh, and respond to things quickly because you wanna have an actual conversation on the video, agree with people respectfully, have discussions, it's all great. It just means it's gonna help you rank higher if you get a bunch of comments like our ghost in the shell thing. We were arguing with people in the comments, not arguing, but discussing things in the comments. And it really helped us because we, it, you know, YouTube recognizes that people are actually engaging with that content. They don't really recognize whether it's good or bad engagement unless people are hitting that dislike button. In the comments down below, share with us any reaction videos that you make based off this tutorial. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you for watching and good luck growing your YouTube audience. Bye.